Western countries are concerned about Russia's expanding influence in Africa's Sahel and its border regions. Sudan's ruling military council has previously considered allowing Russia to open a naval base on the Red Sea coast, a strategic region where Gulf countries in Turkey also vie for influence. Africa 54's Paul Diho spoke with Joseph Siegel, director of research at the Africa Center for Strategic Studies, National Defense University for more insight on Lavrov's visit to Africa. Joseph Siegel, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You've written extensively about uh, Russia-Africa relations. Uh, you've uh, gone to the extent of saying that uh, uh, Russia is trying to gain influence uh, in Africa without investing there. Let's start there. You know, Russia provides less than 1% of the foreign direct investment that goes into Africa. Um, yet, uh, you know, Russia has very um, strategic interest in Africa. First, it's trying to establish some strategic foothold uh, along the Mediterranean and Red Sea, so it wants to have a naval presence there. You know, secondly, uh, Russia wants to uh, displace Western influence and in the process, you know, maintain Russia's posture as a, as a great power. Third, uh, you know, Russia is trying to normalize uh, non-democratic uh, forms of government. So it's trying to prop up authoritarian systems. Some analysts have suggested that uh, uh, Africa is, maybe if I use this analogy, is like a beautiful woman. Everybody is, going, is trying to court Africa. Uh, for example, uh, you have the Russian foreign minister uh, going to Africa every other week. He was just there not too long ago. Now he's making another round. Uh, you also had U.S. diplomats uh, uh, crisscrossing the, the continent. Uh, what do you make of that? It's not an economic relationship. But since the uh, invasion of Ukraine, Russia wants to show that it's not isolated. And so, you know, by being able to have uh, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, travel throughout Africa, he's able to say, listen, we're welcome, we're not isolated, we're still a great power, um, and we can continue on in, as business as usual. And indeed, Lavrov has made three trips to Africa in the last six months, here in the middle of a you know, major war that Russia is engaged in. To the extent that they can project this is just normal, um, and in fact that it's Russia that's under threat, then it helps to change the narrative of what's actually going on in the ground, where Russia is the aggressor, Russia has violated the territorial integrity of its neighbor, Russia is being accused of war crimes for, you know, um, sending missiles into apartment complexes and targeting civilians and torture and, and extrajudicial killings. Do you think African countries are trying to have it both ways? Uh, on one hand, they're trying to I engage the West, uh, the United States, uh, uh, Europe. Uh, they're also trying to engage Russia. What do you make of that? The majority of African countries have condemned uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But for those that are abstaining or you know entertaining Russian visits, I think there's several um, dimensions. You know, at the at the most obvious, there are those leaders who now rely on Russia for political support. They've, they've been co-opted. You know, these are countries you know, like Central African Republic and Mali, uh, increasingly Burkina Faso, Eritrea. I think there's another group that does want to have it both ways. And uh, on the one hand, I think that's a fair position. You know, Africans should have choices and um, you know, there's respect for having independent uh, foreign policy. Joe, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.